dear student i am dr harold thomas professor in applied geology dr hari singh gaur vishwavidyalaya sagar today in this course i will deliver my lecture on sedimentary system today i will proceed under the following heads introduction sedimentary system hope it will be useful for you try to be regular in course rocks form from material derived from pre-existing rocks by processes of denudation together with material of organic origin are sedimentary rock natural agencies like blowing wind running water percolating groundwater glaciers in motion etc are in ceaseless operation causing continuous wear and tear of the rock exposed to their ferry the products of such decay are subjected under favorable condition to sedimentation and subsequent compact the resulting rock masses thus form under ordinary pressure temperature conditions are known as the sedimentary rocks or secondary rocks some of the most common rocks of this type are sandstone limestone laterite coal etc the sedimentary rocks are of widespread occurrence upon the surface of the globe the product of weathering may or may not remain at the spot where they were first formed the insoluble residue materials sometimes manage to evade the transporting agency and hence accumulate in situ at least for a certain length of time the soluble substances are readily removed in solution and the more durable constituents like quartz travel in suspension with the surface runoff till condition favorable for their sedimentations are met with the material thus transported either in solution or in suspension are capable of traveling variable distance ultimately to reach the sea whenever condition are favorable deposition may take place due to settling down of the suspended particles or precipitation of the soluble constituents the sediments thus formed continue to accumulate in suitable basin of the sedimentation and then accumulation is sufficient the loose particles are gradually subjected to compaction and finally conversion into sedimentary rocks it is estimated that every year about 50 tons of dissolved matters and 300 tons of solid matters for every square miles of the earth surface are carried to the sea sedimentary rocks are deposited in layers one over another the first form are at the bottom and the latter at the top sedimentology is the science that deal with the description classification and origin of sedimentary rocks and it is the study of sediments and sedimentation the science of sedimentology is a relative new and young discipline system and the basic principle of sedimentology have been developed and refined by geologists for over a century the interaction of the hydrological system and the crust result in the operation of sedimentary system as a result of the transfer of energy between the various part of the sedimentary system new land forms and new bodies of the sedimentary rocks are created most of the energy that derive this system ultimately comes from the sun gravitational and chemical potential energy is also tr transferred 
in various part of the sedimentary system. It is useful to visualize a hypothetical sedimentary system as consisting of the source of sediments weathering a transport path for the sediments, a site of deposition and the process that compact the sediments together to form a set solid rock. Fortunately, many of these sedimentary processes operate today and geologists actively study rivers, delta and ocean and other sedimentary system in an effort to understand the characteristic of the rock formed in this environment, weathering. Weathering is the interaction between the elements in the atmosphere and the rock exposed at the earth's surface. The atmosphere can mechanically break down the rock through processes such as ice wedding and it can chemically decompose the rock by a variety of reaction. The atmosphere breaks down and decomposes pre-existing solid rocks and form a layer of loose decayed rock debris or soil. This unconsolidated material can then be transported easily by water, wind and glacier, ice, etc. Transportation. Running water is the most effective form of sediment transports. All rivers carry large quantities of sediments towards the sea. This fact is readily appreciated if you consider the great delta of the world each formed from sediment transported by a river. Indeed, sediment is most abundant in most river that a river might best be thought of as a system of water and sediment rather than simply a channel of flowing water. As clastic sediment is transported by a river, it is sorted and separated according to the grain's size and com composition. Large particles accumulated in high energy environments as gravel, medium sized grains are concentrated as sand and finer material settles out as mud. The grain size of the sediments correlates with the energy of the transporting media. Thus, large particles are carried by rapid moving streams with high amount of kinetic energy. Only small particles are transported by slowly moving stream, wind, glaciers and shoreline currents also transport sediments, but their activity is somewhat restricted to a special climate zone. Components from dissolved materials are carried in solution are ultimately precipitated to form limestone or salt. For example, sediment depositional environment alluvial fan in many arid region of the world thick deposit of sedimentary rocks accumulate in alluvial fans at the base of the mountain range. Deposition occurs here because a stream channel wide, widen and slope decreases causing the water to slow down and drop its sediments. Flash floods and debris flows are an important factor in this environment. Torrents from cloud burst pick up the loose debris on the slope of the mountain range and deposited it on the basin floor. The sediments in an alluvial fin characteristically is coarse grained and conglomerate is the most abundant rocks type. In the central part of the basin, fine silt and mud can accumulate in temporary lakes 
and commonly are associated with coarse fen deposits. Fluvial system, the great river of the world, are the major channels by which erosional debris is transported from the continents to the ocean before reaching the ocean most river meanders across flat alluvial plains and deposit a considerable amount of sediment within this environments sediment is deposited in a stream channel on bars and on flood plains perhaps the most significant type of sedimentation occur on the bars on the inside of meanders bends stream deposit have channel of relatively coarse sands or gravel cut into horizontal layer of fine silt and mud that were deposited on the flood plain environment one of the most significant depositional system occurs where major river enter the ocean and deposited most of their sediment in marine deltas a delta can be very large covering area of more than 36000 square kilometer commonly delta are very complex and involve various distinct sub environment such as beaches bars lagoons swamps stream channels and lakes because delta are large features and include both marine and non marine sub environments a great variety of sediment types accumulate in them sand silt mud dominant a deltic deposit can be recognized only after considerable study of the sizes and shape of the various rock bodies and their relationship to each other both marine and non marine fossil can be preserved in a delta glacial system a glacier transports large boulders gravels sand and silt suspended together in the ice this material is eventually deposited near the margin of the glacier as the ice melt the resulting sediment is unsorted and un stratified with angular individual particles that rest on the polished and stated flow of the underlying rock fine grain particles dominant in many glacier deposit but angular boulders and pebbles are invariably present A stream form the melt waters of glacier rework the unsorted glacier debris and reef deposited beyond the glacier as stratified sorted stream deposit the unsorted glacier deposit are thus directly associated with well sorted stream deposits from the melt water shoreline system much sediments accumulates in the zone where the land meets the ocean within this zone a variety of sub environments occur including beaches bars spites lagoons and tidal flats each has its own characteristic sediments where wave action is strong mud is winnowed out and only sand or gravel accumulates as beaches or bars beach gravels accumulates along shoreline where high wave energy is expended the gravels are well sorted and well rounded and commonly are stratified in low dipping cross strata ancient gravel beaches are relatively thin they are wide spread and commonly are associated with clean well sorted sand deposited offshore lagoon system offshore bars and reefs commonly seal off parts of the coast forming lagoons a lagoon is 
protected from the high energy of waves. So, the water is relatively calm and quiet, fine grain sediments reach in organic matters accumulates as black muds. Eventually, the lagoon may fill with sediments and evolve into a swamp where the bottom vegetation provides enough organic matter as coal deposit may form. The rise and fall of sea level shift the position of barriers, bars and thus the organic rich muds or coal formed in the lagoon or swamp in interbedded with sand deposited on the barrier Iceland. Tidal flat system. The tidal flat environment is unique in being alternately covered with a sheet of shallow water and exposed to the air. Tidal currents are not strong. They generally transport only fine silt and sand and typically develop ripple marks over a broad area of the tidal flat. Mud cracks commonly form during low tide and are subsequently covered and preserved. Ancient tidal flat deposits are thus characterized by accumulation of silt and mud is horizontal layers with an abundance of pill marks and mud cracks. In restricted settings, evaporites can form on tidal flats. Eolian wind system. Wind is a very effective sorting agent. A small silt and dust grains are lifted high in the air and may be transported thousands of kilometers before being deposited when wind velocity drops. Sand is transported close to the surface and eventually accumulates in the dunes. Gravel cannot be moved effectively by wind. In arid region, a major process is the migration of sand dunes. Sand is blown up and over the dunes and accumulates on the steep dune faces. Large scale cross strata that dip in a downwind direction are thus formed. Ancient dune deposit have large scale cross strata consisting of well sorted, well rounded sand grains. The most significant ancient wind deposits are sand stones that accumulate in large dune fields comparable to the present Sahara and Arabian desert and the great desert of the Australia, these sandstones are vast deposits of the clean sand that preserve the large scale cross bed developed by the migrating dunes. The natural agencies of erosion, transportation, deposition and consolidation brought about development of sedimentary or sedimentary rocks. The study of sedimentary rock is important to understand the paleo and present sedimentary environment. Sediments depositional environment such as alluvial, fluvial, lagoon, glacier, etc. are discussed under the, this module. This is followed by the conclusion on the sedimentary rocks giving emphasis on its study. Furthermore, studies please read the textbook references and link given in the text. Thank you very much.